Well, today is our last day in Chile, and I have to tell you, it's a little bit of sweet because we don't really want to go. You know, I would love to see more of this country, more of the boat yards, more of the work going on. The whole thing just interests me to no end. You know, it's just been a great time. It's been uh, educational for us, and I just hope it's been educational for everyone that, that watches our videos. But we're not leaving yet. Today, we're headed to Astrolero Playa Negra, which is the boat yard at Black Beach. And uh, they tell me that there's some serious work going on there, and I just can't wait to see it. Black Beach is the beach outside of Coronel, the town of Coronel. Coronel is quite a town because it's an industrialized town. It has some very large piers. What those piers are being used for, I'm not quite certain, but it's either for, you know, oil tankers or freighters or something like that. They also have a railway going through the town here. So, you know, there's some shipping going on here. It's, uh, it's a busy town. Now, the reason why they call it Black Beach is because the beach is black. It's, it's seriously black sand, especially when it's wet. It looks fantastic. It's uh, very different than any beach I've ever looked at. The boatyard itself is on a stretch of beach here that's really convenient because it's nice and flat and I'm sure that that's why they located the boatyard here because it's got space. It's got space to work. It doesn't help in a boatyard if you're on any kind of grade or anything like that. So this is nice flat ground. They can take advantage of it in the best way. It's a perfect place to build wooden boats and that's what they're doing. The manager of this boatyard is Edgar Gutierrez. Now his grandfather was a shipwright in Chile and his father and his uncle. His grandfather actually started a boatyard many, many years ago. His father and his uncle started this boatyard right here. And at this point, Edgar, the grandson, is in charge of this boatyard. And, uh, you know, he's into it. So this is a natural grown uh, piece right here. A lot of the boats in the States will start out with thicker planking at the bottom and then taper up as you go. To a bag and put it right in this position and then feed steam into it, right? And then once it softens up, you just push it right down in place. No. We actually met Edgar the day before in the previous boatyard. And I just think that shows what his interest is. You know, he was there, very interested, and uh, I've been with him today. We've gone around the boatyard, and uh, both of us are quite excited to talk to each other because, uh, you know, I find it that he is very much like me in a lot of ways. I don't do exactly uh, everything the way everybody else does things, and I think Edgar's got that kind of a feeling as well. Four blades on it. I'd like to see that. Like... Now, this is a handmade piece, and uh, uh, nothing else would do the job because uh, tools like this really don't exist. Through the shaft log right here, like this. So it's driven by a drill and it comes all the way through. They first, they drill a smaller hole this size and then they insert this in the smaller hole and it bores it out to this size. And then it goes to boil. So For like about 40 minutes. So we'll have it softer. You know, more flexible. So more flex you have it more flexible. Right. Developed a process of steaming in a plastic bag rather than boiling like that. We use steam generators. We put the planking in a plastic bag right, and then insert the steam generators into the plastic bag. So you could... So you could, uh, you could put the plank up and hang it right here and then steam it right here Entonces and bend it while it's still steaming. Right? And, and, then and then after it's bent, you can continue to steam it for a while. You know, and I got to talk to him about some of the things that I do, the way I go about things, and we were both very much interested in the way each one of us d does different things. And I think we learned quite a bit from each other. And, uh, you know, there's things that we can actually take into the field and actually use. So, you know, we... He's done me a lot of good looking at these boats and the way they're built, and uh, I think I've done some good down here myself. They're just doing a lot of work in this boat yard. It's very productive, and uh, you know, the pace does not stop. They're setting up uh, frames, planking up and everything, so it's really something to watch these people working away. Now here's one of the shipwrights cutting planking out with a chainsaw. 
And he doesn't have a little tiny chainsaw, he's got a real powerful chainsaw. And uh, you know, it's, uh, it's quite a process. I've been watching him to see exactly how he goes about it. And you know, I wouldn't have done it exactly that way, but I think that after watching him, I can see exactly why he does it. They dig a little ditch down there with the tip of the chainsaw, maybe a quarter of an inch from the line. And it really helps in following the line afterwards because the line isn't hiding under the chainsaw and you can work it in both directions. It's kind of a technique that requires quite a bit of understanding, it also requires quite a bit of strength. I don't really have that strength, but I can get away with it. So they handed the chainsaw to me and uh, off I went. And I thought that was uh, pretty interesting because not everybody in the world would have got an opportunity to pick up one of these chainsaws and actually start working. You know, I wish it was a different time in life because I would have just taken that plank over and started fitting it and putting it onto the boat and everything else. I would have loved to have been here to erect the framework and bend the frames into these boats, you know, cut the timbering, whatever it might be. And uh, who knows, maybe I will actually get an opportunity to come down here and do some work. They must have noticed that I was really interested because they offered me the chainsaw. I didn't have to ask for it. They wanted to see if I could actually work. This is really a treat for me to actually be down here working and to be down here just viewing these boats and being introduced to these shipwrights of whom I really relate to. You know, they and me get along really well because we understand each other, we know what we've been doing, we understand that a man works with his hands and uh, he gets a satisfaction out of it. There's no question about that in my mind. I've been satisfied working with my hands my whole life and I have no intention to stop it. Okay, here's something I really, really enjoy seeing right here. This is really an improvised system right here of, of boiling the planking. Now I know it's for boiling planking because the tube is actually curved already and they've cut the planking out to an approximate curve, but they still need to be steamed or boiled in order to bend into place or edge set into place. That's why they've got the tank a little bit curved so that the planks will slip down in there. This particular tank right here is made of welded together 50 gallon drums and it's fired by the scraps from the boatyard, which is something that they're a little bit uh, concerned about with themselves because it is a danger in the boatyard to have these fires going. If ever one of these boats should catch fire, it would spread across this boatyard like nothing. So it's a little bit dangerous, but they've got it in like a, in a position where uh, the wind doesn't blow the uh, ash across the boatyard and stuff. They're trying to keep it under control. They've got water on the scene to try to douse it if they have any problems, but uh, they've got a blanket here over the end so all the boiling, all the steam doesn't just come out of the end. Just you know, uh, very quickly, and uh, this does the job. They slip the planks down in there, it probably takes 40, 50 minutes for the plank to soften up, and then they pull it out of there and run over to the boat with it as fast as they can and clamp it into position and edge set it into position. And uh, there's a whole bunch of different things I'd like to show you about the way they plank these boats that are really interesting to me. But this is one of them. You don't see this stuff going on in the States very much. They'd use a steam box with a gas powered uh, a generator for steam. And that's kind of what uh, the owner of the boat yard is thinking about going over to is gas powered, you know, in a steam box rather than doing the boiling. Take a look up at the bow of this boat right here. A friend of mine uh, once said that these boats were very uh, blunt in the bow and they jammed the sea. Now, uh, you know, I call them bluff bows, but uh, this one's almost barge ended. Up at the shear, it's almost straight across at the stem. And uh, it makes a very hard boat to plank and all these planks are gonna be steamed not only to bend them, but to edge set them into place. They cut them to a certain curve or try to simulate that curve and then they stick them into the steam box and bend them and uh, they bend them in place. And uh, I'd like you to look up at the shear clamp up there or the, the rails, the guards. They actually put a shear clamp inside, but those are the guards. They're made in pieces. These are pieces of eucalyptus and uh, it's the oldest eucalyptus there is. Some of these trees that these are branches of are huge trees over a hundred years old. 
So they cut those out of the eucalyptus trees and all of those angles and all of those bevels are all uh, just estimated and cut with a chainsaw. Very unlike the way we would uh, do something like that in the United States. We'd lift all the bevels and make a big to-do of it and probably cut it in a progressive beveling uh, bandsaw. So everything's done a little bit differently, but there's a purpose for all of it. And uh, they're trying to use as few tools as possible and uh, get it done in a reasonable amount of time. And they're very good at what they do. Very, very good at it. There's no craftsman in the United States that would uh, try to do work like this in the same manner that this work has been done. Now I'm looking over at this other one here. This one's in a fairly uh, finished state. And uh, you can see that uh, that bluff bow is just just absolutely incredible. They just part the sea when they when they when they come down off a wave. They don't allow the boat to sink down into the waves, and it it probably creates a different motion in the boat than uh, we're used to seeing in boats. So it's quite spectacular to see these boats going together. All of these boats are in a different state of completion. And I'm gonna go around and show you some of the different things and the way they go about putting these boats together. One of the things that Edgar has told me that is one of the favorite things that he's got to do is to go out in the woods himself and pick these logs himself. It's a whole process of taking the logs out of the woods, bringing them to the boatyard and sawing them up so he gets to witness the entire process. The timbering doesn't come from another concern or another company. It's all done by this boatyard and uh, you know I think it's fantastic because I think that's one of the things that I like the most too is visiting sawmills and different things like that and uh, getting lumber out of the woods. I don't get a chance to do it as often as I'd like to do it but this is really uh, the Chilean version of a sawmill right here. This timber right here is sawn out. This is going to be one of the engine beds that sits down longitudinally in the bilge of the boat. And the last timber on the other side of this large timber is going to be sawn exactly like this for an engine bed. All done with a chainsaw, like I said. And uh, it doesn't have to be any better than that. That timber is just as strong no matter how you saw it out. So here's some of the eucalyptus trees that they use to frame out these boats. They are spectacular, and uh, they're huge. Uh, this, this tree, uh, this is the top of the log right here, and it's three feet across. The bottom of the log is almost four feet across, and you can see the heart in the tree is well off to one side. Exactly why that is, I don't know, but maybe one side of the tree is facing the sun or something like that, but I'm sure that this tree right here, or this log, is slated for use in these boats and uh, they've got a couple alongside of it, quite a few more alongside of that, and some longer pieces. Here's a piece that I'm sure is gonna be used as a keel because it's got the starting of a branch alongside of it right here. So uh, it might be a stem and four foot, or, or something along those lines, or a stern post or something like that, but they'll use a chainsaw only to cut the pieces out that they need. No bandsaw, no sawmill, chainsaw and electric plane, incredible. Now here's a cut in a eucalyptus tree trunk that's been done with a chainsaw. It's uh, going to be paralleled, I'm sure, with another cut of some sort of timbering, but that is an incredible uh, piece of work because as I sight down it, it's incredibly straight. As a matter of fact, I mean, I can't imagine how a man can do that good a work with a chainsaw and have it come out as good as that. It's incredible. Here's another one over here to my right. And uh, you can see that it's got some slots cut in it right here. Those are the, uh, they put some pencil lines on there and dug some slots in it. Now they're gonna stick the chainsaw right through there and cut this into like uh, five bys. And that'll also be used in the boat for some particular purpose. I'm not sure what that purpose is gonna be, but this is an area where they do a lot of the first cutting with the chainsaws to come up with the timbering for the keels and the stems and different things like that. And uh, then they'll bring it inside and touch it up and use it and then run an electric plane over it, smooth it out a little bit and get it into the boat. <laughs> this boatyard is just too cool for words as far as I'm concerned. Everything is going on here. The boatyard is just fun. Work is fun and they're all having a good time smiling. But you know what? Everybody's getting hungry and they've decided that we should all go back to the shop. They prepared a special dish that they call a disc. And it's not too hard to see why they call it a disc. It's made in a big giant disc 
over an open flame and uh, it's got seafood and chicken and all these different things. It's like a big stew of all different kinds of things. You can take your pick. You know, if you like seafood, there's seafood. If you like chicken, it's in there. There's sausage, I believe, in there. And uh, the smell of it is just making its way around the whole boatyard. It, it, it's great. And, uh, you know, it's given us the opportunity to sit down and eat. I think when you eat with people, you get to know people even better. And uh, it was an opportunity to speak with them about their aspirations, what they like to do. They asked me questions about my life and what I did, and I told them what I could. After lunch, we got a taste of the program that the university and the boatyard have put together. And I believe what their intention here is to do is to really interest young people in the building of boats, the sailing of boats, and just in general, you know, the marine trades. What we've got here are two small boats that have been built in conjunction with the university and the boatyard and the students of the university. This isn't very much unlike what we do in the States in a lot of situations. I mean, this is just a standard weave fiberglass cloth and uh, epoxy resin. The epoxy resin is made in Brazil. It's a two to one mix and uh, very simple to do here. We're just fiberglassing over the keel here first and down onto the plywood. So we're kind of poking at it with the brush to get the air out from underneath it. It's gonna come out great. It's a plywood design. It's a very old uh, European, uh, I, I think German design actually. And uh, it's not like unlike many of the designs that used to be in the United States in the 50s really. This is very similar to a lightning class sailboat or a blue jay. I'm here with Lucien, he's a Frenchman. He's lived in, in Chile for many years. Uh, he's quite an accomplished sailor and uh, he's very much interested in all these same projects that I'm interested in. It's great to be working with someone like this. We've got an American, myself, we've got a Frenchman here, we've got some Chileans and we all work together the same way and uh, we're gonna get it done. So if you can sail a small boat, you can sail a big boat. So sail training is done quite regularly on smaller boats of this size and this is no different than that. So I think there'd be many, many people anxious to sail this little boat as well as be involved in building it. And hopefully these boats will go on to teach quite a few things to the students, sailing, seamanship, carpentry, boat building, all the marine trades, like I said, could possibly stem from a project like this. Well, what an experience it's been coming down to Chile. I mean, traveling is not something that I'm really used to, but I think I'm gonna try to get used to it because it really interests me. And uh, we would like to visit other countries, you know, where there's other wooden boat building going on because it's wooden boat building that really interests me. And uh, I don't know if I could be quite as enthusiastic about any other subject as wooden boat building. It's just been a lifetime of experience for me. This has really added to my experience and I really enjoy uh, knowing that there's wooden boats being built around the world. So I love to thank the University of Concepcion one more time and Diego for having us down. And uh, the time we had was just unequaled by anything I've ever done. I've never traveled, we're hoping to do more of it. The next thing we're up to actually is making an appearance at Filson's Clothing Store in New York on Saturday, February the 29th at the New York City flagship store. And we're gonna be doing some knot tying demos and showing some of our videos and answering questions. So really it's a meet and greet situation. You know, it's gonna be a great day. I really look forward to meeting my audience actually and speaking with them and answering any kind of questions they have. And uh, you know, I learn just about as much from my audience as they learn from me. So meet me down there and uh, let's get together and have some fun.